Ofcom weekend analysis for the 16th to the 19th of August 2019. Now, if this is your first time here, please do pause the video. Just make sure you're comfortable with that before proceeding. Hopefully the Scottish accent doesn't annoy you too much. Hopefully I'm clear, you can understand me. But what I have is around 20 charts that I feel like should be on your radar for the forthcoming week. The, the overall market will be assessed to let you know what levels you should be worried about, what levels should give you a bit more confidence in your trading. But I think just to get it right out there straight off the bat is I don't believe in get rich quick schemes. I don't day trade my time horizon for trades. It's generally weeks to months. So if your style is day trading, this probably isn't going to be a, a good fit for you. So just to give myself a little bit of maybe credibility, uh, I am currently registered with the CMT Association. I'm working my way towards my chartered status at the moment. Uh, so, you know, technical analysis is my thing. And if you are somebody that finds yourself stepping in the brown stuff or, you know, getting knocked out by Wall Street every five minutes, you can maybe stick around for a couple of minutes at the end. There might be something that we can do to to maybe help you not get knocked out. So if you enjoy the video, please subscribe to our channel. We try to upload maybe once or twice a week. We don't do these videos for social media very often, but when we do, they're, they're pretty popular, both on my website and obviously on YouTube. So um, yeah, just um, subscribe to our channel. So I'll just dive into the charts at the moment, okay? so. First up, we've got SPY. Now, obviously, this is the S&P 500 index. It's, uh, it's at a level at the moment where we're in the middle of no man's land. I think we can absolutely, we can be bullish above this level here. I think the levels to watch where you might want to be, you know, super careful about the overall market is if we drop below this level. That would be a signal to me that we're entering into more of a bearish environment. We're maybe looking at, you know, towards corrections and so forth. But at the moment, it's not a massive concern. Tech, again, we can see recently with tech, we have a very clearly defined uptrend. And again, that trend is being respected at the moment. Um, so we're, uh, we're in a bullish environment. I think that's the first thing to say with, um, with tech. Are we mindful of levels where we might want to get defensive? Absolutely, we need to be. It would be incredibly foolish if you were not aware of these levels. And again, super bearish below this level. But you know, at the moment, not not there yet. We're we're still in a bullish environment. Now, the Russell was the one that was given a lot of concern over the last few days. Now, the reason for that is we've obviously got this clear support level in play. I think if we drop below that level. What you have to understand is that with the major indices, especially with what we've seen last year when we had that huge monster drop in the market, when the market you know dropped you know, nearly 20%, there's always one index that gets the party started. And the concern for me this week was definitely the Russell 2000. If you think about a basket of 2000 stocks, you know, dropping, yeah, some of them will hold up. Generally, on the whole, though, if 2,000 stocks start to, to plummet, you, you're going to find that that has a, a knock-on effect to things like the S&P 500, to tech. Uh, so, you know, absolutely, we've got a rebound here. Uh, quite a few of my guys have done very well on this anticipated move to the upside. It's moving very, very well. Very clear. Uh, nearly 8.5% upside there if we take the view that this will act as resistance. But I think the concern is that there's a very clear 13.5% drop to be had if we move into this zone here. So, you know, very much bullish on the Russell at the moment, but I'll reconsider that if we, we drop below this level. The Dow Jones is obviously one of those, again, uh, one of the indices. Again, we're holding support level there, guys, on the 200 ME. I don't, I don't see anything really massively bearish at the moment. Obviously, we're, we're at the mercy a little bit of, I suppose, news events. I think we only have to look towards the headlines during the week that made me giggle. 
um, you know, markets in turmoil and generally speaking, when we see headlines like that, it's, it's quite often a, a good indication that we might want to be looking to, to discounts and, and buying opportunities. The way the, the financial media works is just absurd and um, it never fails to, to raise a smile. So very much bullish on the overall market at the moment, but very mindful of the levels that we need to be aware of. And the stocks that we're going to start talking about this week, I think the, the first one is very, very logical here with NVIDIA. We can see that we've had positive earnings this week. This is a stock that I did very, very well on last month. Um, so very much a case of just waiting to see what happens with price here. Um, obviously, I've highlighted there with the, the green circle where I would maybe want to consider taking a new position into the market. At the moment, it's not particularly appealing. For those of you that are maybe in the stock at the moment, you know, hopefully it starts to move to the upside. But again, very, very mindful of the key levels that we need to be uh, aware of. Apple, uh, very, very consistent on Apple uh, over the last few weeks. Again, got to be bullish above $200. I think the, the level for me that would cause a little bit of concern is if we drop below this 198 level. But as it stands at the moment, I think from that level to this level, we've got 17.5% upside. So I don't see any immediate concerns with Apple at the moment. Micron is interesting at the moment. I think with something like Micron technology, we clearly see here we've got a, a resistance level in play. Price is currently pushing up against it. Um, I think for me, We've obviously had this battle in the past at this key level. So I think if we get a move back below this level and it starts to fall away a little bit, I'd probably reconsider what I'm doing with MU. But certainly above this level, I think there's a, a very logical 20% upside to be had. We're in a recent uptrend. The pullback is perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. So the expectation is that this starts to move off again and it starts to move towards that $50 uh, level. Square Inc is, um, you know, for full disclosure, I've taken a position in Square Inc in the last couple of days. And the, the, the thesis behind it is that this level will act as support. Very, very straightforward. Obviously, there's a few other technical indicators that are not presented by the chart. But, you know, just to give you, uh, I suppose, a bit of insight to my thinking behind it, is we've got a very clear risk to reward proposition. Very good 32% upside objective. And, you know, the entry, and it's a very clearly defined stop loss in play as well. So, uh, you know, if if it works out, great. If it doesn't work out, no no real you know damage done. Um, it's all clearly risk defined. And, you know, certainly I'll reconsider my position if we break below this. Uh, because I, I think if we break below, the next level is $50, which would represent 17% to the downside. Uh, Adobe is performing very, very well. It's, it's obviously on an uptrend. We, we do have to deal with big pullbacks every now and again with, this, with the stock, but you know the, the, the support level is clearly in play. Very, very similar looking chart to the triple Q, actually, where I would just be, you know, super cautious if we dropped you know into this this zone here and i think all bets would be off if, if we had a complete meltdown and you'd probably find the markets would be in a bit of turmoil i think if adobe starts to to maybe fall away uh, microsoft again very very similar to uh, adobe i think microsoft is, is obviously one of those where again we've got the support levels in play and you know very clear upside objective there 12 percent from current levels and it's a stock that you know I, I do like very very much cisco however is a, a completely different um, scenario here i think for me in this zone here you know absolutely bullish as soon as price drops below this level you have to get defensive you know, it made zero sense. If you held through earnings, it made zero sense. You need to have 
one, in order to hold through earnings, you need to have some kind of profit buffer in play, which means, you know, you, you should be at least 10% in profit to hold through earnings. For me, that's just common sense. It's one of the rules that I have in play. I'm also not, not looking to take positions in the seven days leading up to earnings either. So for those of you that have held through Cisco earnings and you're maybe emailing me or messaging me, you know, I, I, I can't do anything about it. Unfortunately, you've you, you've probably made a bit of an error there. Uh, technically, it just didn't, it didn't support it. You know, hopefully price rebounds and, you know, anybody out there holding can, can obviously make your money back. But uh, yeah, at the moment, it's just, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense, unfortunately. Netflix is obviously interesting. You know, I, I taken a lot of heat on social media a few weeks ago saying that it was a, a short, as soon as we got this rejection here, it was, we're in a bearish environment. So, you know, what happens from here? Who knows? I think if you are bearish on the stock, I think there's a very clear target in play for you. If you are taking the view that you want to be bullish on Netflix, which I have to say is a chart that's horrible. I, I get that it's done well in the past, probably for many of you. I suspect many of you will be married to the stock and you know for me I'm only dating I'm not marrying and for me to become bullish on Netflix it probably has to move above this level uh, at the moment just I, I'm, I'm not really interested in Netflix whatsoever. PayPal however is very very interesting. I think when we look to the past we can see that it's got a habit of doing this um, very clearly defined support levels we obviously got a breakout, went on a, a huge run. Again, got a, a support level in play here. Quite a few of my guys have taken positions in PayPal. The expectation is that this starts to move back towards 120. Obviously, market conditions uh, permitting. But again, just to show you where I would probably look to get defensive on PayPal, I think if it breaks below $100, I'd probably say all bets are off. Now, again, this is a, a chart that, you know, most of you that follow me really closely will understand around six weeks ago, uh, I presented uh, an analysis on gold and, you know, what the breakout in gold meant. Now, again, for full disclosure, I have a position in this at the moment. It's a um, very clear profit target in place here. And... You know, for those of you that are maybe looking towards gold as an area, you can probably look towards other areas of gold. I don't think you're being offered any kind of optimal entry at the moment. I think here, you know, absolutely optimal entry is in here. The pullback has probably offered opportunity, but price is it's kind of in the middle of no man's land at the moment, as, as I like to say. But for those of you that are in this, you know, very clear profit target in place, you know, if gold starts to move towards $1,900, $2,000, you're going to find a lot of the gold miners, the gold stocks are probably moving along with it. So um, might be an area that you want to maybe explore a little bit. Um, Treasury bonds, again, profit objective met this week with a lot of my guys. And we've had an immediate breakout. Now, the breakout is going to be interesting because the question that, that I suppose everybody has is, is this level going to hold with any pullback? We can see that with momentum, it was um, significantly overbought. So you would expect a little bit of a pullback. So provided the pullback holds and we don't break back into this level here, where I would probably reconsider my bullish thesis on treasury bond uh, ETF, TLT, uh, I think above this level, absolutely bullish. Below it, not so much. Yeti Holdings. I've had a few messages about this this week. And again, it's logical. We're in a range at the moment. We can clearly see we've had three touches. You'd expect a fourth. And, you know, although I would never say, you know, go and short this stock right now, absolutely not. I've got a philosophy that's based upon optimal entries into the market. It's one of the edges that I consider myself to have over the market. And 
you know, I'd be looking at this level here with a lot of interest. I'd bounce, I'd buy it, below it, I'd short it. It's that simple. Disney. Now, again, Disney is an interesting one because Disney is one that I get messaged about quite a lot. This is one where obviously Fibonacci levels are, are obviously respected quite a bit with this. Again, bullish above this level at 132, below it not so much. Obviously great company. I love the Avengers and all the comic book Marvel uh, movies as much as the, the next person. But I, I prefer the, the stock price more. If the stock price is going up, great. If it's not, then I probably want to reconsider on a move below this level. But above this, obviously clear, uh, nine and a half, ten percent upside, I think. Uh, XLNX has obviously got a support level in play here. I think it's very logical at the moment to be bullish on XLNX below it. I think if we break below $100, I think you could probably look to, to reconsider what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, I think that one makes a lot of sense. ZTS. Now, ZTS has obviously been in a, a really good uptrend for the last seven, eight months, like a lot of stocks have. Now, the interesting thing about ZTS is, as we can see, it's one of those stocks that can go through a prolonged period of time where it's not really doing much. But obviously the trend is there. And, you know, I don't know how many of you would be happy to, to maybe hold this stock for a month where it's just doing a slow grind to the upside and then it has these big spikes. That's perfectly fine. That's exactly what I look for. I'm, I'm very happy with that kind of movement. As long as the price isn't going down and again offered opportunity on this breakout again is it going to start to, to be one of those stocks that kind of moves sideways again and, and breaks higher I don't know but it's obviously a stock that's trending it's moving up and I absolutely want to be a part of those kind of stocks Align Technology now Last week, I presented a chart to social media and there was a couple of individuals on you know various social media channels that reached out and said, look, you know, why aren't you committing as to whether you're bullish or bearish? And I think the, the response that I generally have is that technical analysis doesn't give you a magic crystal ball to see into the future. What it does is it allows you to be able to react to the information that's presented to you by price. So when I said last week that this is a level that you need to watch very carefully, I'm, I'm neither bullish or bearish on the stock. I'm just waiting to see what happens with price at this level. Is it going to bounce at which point I would buy or is it going to short at which point you would short? So if it, if it breaks below, would you short? Yes. Some of my guys have, have shorted the LGN this week and are, are doing very well on their options. But this is really the message that I want to get across is, you know, just do what price tells you. It's, it's really that simple. Obviously, there, there's technical tools that we use to aid decision making, you know. But, you know, price is the number one indicator and you just do what price tells you to do. Um, cat again another one I, I taken a bit of heat on last week and again it's it's breaking down I, I don't know what you know those of you that have maybe come through on social media you know maybe the same individuals are coming through again the trend is down guys it's it's not rocket science look at the chart it's going down if you're holding this position and you have done for the last 18 months I would, I would just question why, because you've got other stocks that have moved 80, 100, 150%. Why, why would you hold this? I, I don't get it. Um, so, yeah, I think there's more pain for cat if we break below this level. I think it's good night for a while. Um, again, if you're holding, I, I do hope that it moves to the upside. I, I obviously have no position in cat, but, you know, I, I'm I'm only dating these stocks. I, I'm not married to them, so I, I, I don't really care. Um, I'm just in and out for you know a couple of months. 
and then I'm reallocating risk elsewhere. It's just logical to me. I, I don't understand why there's so many people out there that just hold on to this stock because it's done well for you in the past. You know, if you look at the past, and Cat's one of those that I did very well on a few years ago as well, but you know, at some point you just say, thank you very much, on to the next one. Um, let's take the next girl out for dinner. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think Cat is just one of those that, you know, it's not, it's not really for me at the moment. This, however, has performed very, very well over the last 12 months, over 70%. And I think when you understand that obviously trends are moving, you know, trends tend to trend. That's what we want. We want stocks that do this. We want stocks that keep going up. And, you know, every pullback here offers opportunity. And again, we've broken out recently. So I, I think, you know, above above these levels, I think we've, we've got to be bullish. And any pullback, I think, would probably offer opportunity as well. So I think uh, I think Americold Reality Trust is one of those that you should... Uh, definitely add to your watch list at the very least. Um, match, again, the trends, there for all to see. It's not rocket science. And again, I think we can say that we're bullish above this level. I think above $80, very, very happy. I think for me, I would reconsider my position, my thesis on match if we dropped into this zone here. But I think the expectation with match is that this now starts to move, provided the market plays ball with everybody, that this starts to move back towards 90, 95, and ultimately $100. That, that is absolutely the, the hope that, that I would have uh, for match. Now, I did say at the start, you know, if you're somebody that, that does struggle a little bit, that I might be able to, to maybe do a couple of things that might be able to help you out but if you enjoyed that analysis please do subscribe to our channel like i said before we try to upload uh, once or twice a week uh, although these analysis videos are primarily for my client base at the weekend i think with the way the current market is i am trying to give out as much help as i possibly can just to let others know what i see i know that these videos are mega popular so um, yeah, feel free to subscribe if this is your first time here. Now, if you don't know who I am, uh, I'm Sam, and I said, you know, as I said before, I'm I'm currently uh, registered with the CMT Association, working my way towards my my chartered status for technical analysis at the moment. Um, I also run Honeystocks.com Trading School. But like I said before, I don't teach get rich quick schemes or day trading. Um, styles. Um, I think if I was to break it down as to the people that I can generally help is, you know, if you've maybe got a career or a business, if you want to get away from day trading, if you want better consistency, if you want to learn and not just follow others, if you want to trade with minimal stress, if you want to align with a super successful trading group, and maybe if you want to have the time to enjoy life a bit more. I think those are the people that I can generally help. And I think if you were to ask yourself, you know, what if you were able to build a trading plan and maybe had a rule set for the rest of your life, how much easier would that make your trading? And I think one of the unique things that I do at honeystocks.com, although I have a, a huge focus on education and teaching, I also provide the support of my community and within that community, I obviously provide, you know, charting and you might want to call them trade ideas, uh, but every single trade idea that I have posted to my community since I started the company has been logged on my website for complete and open transparency. Uh, I have a code of ethics that I need to follow with the CMT Association. So I log every single chart and it's all up on my website, so you can go and have a look. Now, I'm not saying for one second that by joining my group, you're going to go and make 580% this year or 1400% this year, definitely not. What I would say to you is that the charts that I provide at any moment in time, if you know some of my guys have some risk to allocate, they might want to consider my charts because 
you, you simply cannot move in on every single chart that I post because the 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 reality is that your capital is likely to be tied up in other positions, but my charts are there as a complete support system, whether you trade options, whether you buy the underlying asset, whatever your deal is, those charts are there as a an add-on to what you will learn uh, from the education side of things. So hopefully that clarifies that. Um, but I think the other thing, you know, just to go back to what I was saying about, you know, the ongoing support, you know, this is a post, as you can see, on the 1st of August, where I'm saying, look, guys, you know, you might want to get defensive here. This isn't a dip that you want to be buying. And I have done this routinely over the last couple of years. This isn't a one-off. I understand when to get defensive ahead of time when the market starts to give me signals that, you know, it's time to get defensive. So that's really a lot of what I do. There's ongoing support. And I know for many of you out there, especially over the last few weeks, a lot of you will have been learning from losses. Maybe you're learning from YouTube. Maybe you're just hunting around social media. Maybe you're watching this just because you, you want to get a few charts. You know, that's fine. Um, but, you know, if you're spending a lot of time and it's not really doing anything for you, if you're reading you know, lots of books, if the charts that you're, you know, following, that you're um acting blindly or not working then you know you might want to reconsider your strategy because ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to get sucked into a big black hole by wall street and i know it's tough it's super super tough and you know if you're somebody that wants to change things up a little bit we genuinely believe in making a difference at honeystocks.com you can go onto our website I've built an incredible community of incredible traders based all over the world. I have taught every single one of them. Uh, and it's just a, a really cool place where everybody shares the best ideas, where we have the best charting, super clean, super easy to understand. And this is the philosophy that I have taught everybody. So if you are somebody that struggles you know, you might want to ask yourself if you want to keep doing it the old way or whether you maybe want to learn a new way. If you do want to learn a new way, um, I'm not going to put a gun to your head. It's very, very straightforward. All you need to do is jump onto our website, have a look around and click apply or join. And, you know, just choose a time. Tell me what you struggle with. Because quite a lot of the time when I have conversations, and I think at this point I've had hundreds of conversations with traders around the world that just struggle badly. A lot of the time I can actually fix a couple of things on a call, but you know, if you are somebody that does genuinely struggle, you know, don't be shy, we don't bite, just jump onto our website, choose a time, and we'll have a conversation, a super informal conversation. I'm not gonna try and shove anything down your throat. I'm not like that. I just genuinely like helping people. So. Um, yeah, please jump onto our website and check that out. And if you have stuck around to the end, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for, for watching and maybe I'll see you soon.